Thank you. Hey guys, my name is Sabrina. I'm the co-wife cousin of Jaguar Project. I'm a junior at Kimball High School, and I used to be a Williams kid just like you guys. Hey guys, my name is Zach. I'm a senior at TC High School. I'm involved in the Pan and ID program. I'm also doing swim. And I'm also, like Sabrina, I was once one of you guys. I was from Williams. for you guys today, but you have to pay attention to make sure it's fun. Thank you. We are so happy to be here to give you guys a presentation today. <laughs> Sabrina, do you know that Williams is the best middle school in Tracy Unified School District? whatever it is, we're coming together as a community. And we're trying to do that also to, as not only in the schools, but also in the town of Tracy itself. All right, Sabrina, let's take a journey back into the past, back when we were one of you guys. Six years ago, CBS came to Tracy High School to do a news report on the biggest anti-bullying club, Bulldog Project. So now we're gonna be watching a short clip from that.
cyberbullying in a unique way? Um, I think the problem is social media and um, kids thinking they can just say whatever they want. The project started a few years ago at Tracy High School, and students use a unique partnership to crack down on bullies in their community. New tonight, CBS 13's Kelly Ryan gives us a look inside this community effort. It's called the Bulldog Project, and it's being recognized across the state for taking a stand against bullies. We're always on the lookout, and we try to stop bullying as much as we can. Tracy High School senior Lauren Perry is a member of an on-campus club that's taking a public stand, getting rid of all forms of bullying. When we see something, our members of our club, we text our group message and we try to, you know, get that page down if so many people report them. These days, a big part of bullying takes place in cyberspace. I think the problem is social media and um, kids thinking they can just say whatever they want and it won't affect um, the other person. The Bulldog Project was started two years ago and has already been recognized with awards and a special invitation to the state capitol. It was a great honor to be there. We were just being recognized for what we, our accomplishments. The club entered into a unique partnership with Tracy Crime Stoppers, allowing kids to report bullying without fear of retaliation. As part of Crime Stoppers, you can like report anonymously about anything. So that was like a part of the club that we incorporated. So if you're too scared to report or you don't know how to report, you can use the Crime Stoppers tip number. Tracy High School administrators say the club has helped them to identify cases of bullying early on. The kids coming in and letting us know. I do see a spike in that, an increase, which is great because then we can try to go in and head it off at the pass. And school officials are quick to recognize the club members' ability to reach students peer to peer. It's the students having the power to go out and make the difference and saying, we're done. We're done with the bullying. Bulldog Project members admit it's not always easy fighting against bullying, but say it's been rewarding seeing the difference they can really make. And even if you just help someone else, just one person, it's better like sticking up to that crowd and helping that one person than not at all. Organizers are encouraging other schools to contact them so they can spread the Bulldog Project across the state. And the Bulldog Project isn't just partnered with Tracy Crime Stoppers. The group also works with students speaking out and entourage of SSF to put an end to bullying. All right, wasn't that cool, guys? All right, so that video aired back when I was a seventh grader. And it's amazing how far that we've come as a club with or as two organizations with one goal in mind, which is anti-bullying. Well, without further ado, I'm pleased to welcome West High School! focusing on the climate of the school and we have different programs at our at our school like conflict management we have brownie here to talk about it a little bit more how y'all doing y'all doing good yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. my name is Aaron Brown otherwise known as brownie and that's a funny name I am senior class president conflict management VP and the main goal of conflict management is to ensure that all students at our school feel safe so that way, if they have any problems, they could come to us to talk about it. And yeah. 
Hello, my name is Nate. I'm a junior at West High. I've been in leadership for three years. And this Saturday, February 23rd, we got an event going on at West High in the Quad. Uh, I, myself, and a few others have put together Chai Chi's first ever suicide prevention awareness walk. <laughs> it's from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the Quad. Anyone and everyone is welcome. Bring your friends, bring your family. There's going to be games, prizes, music. There's going to be food. And the Thank you. Uh, my main goal of the event is to hopefully reach out to you guys and our high schoolers and basically send out the message that if you're feeling any type of way, it is okay to talk about it and there are people out there that care about you. And we want to be able to teach people the signs of what to do and who to go to if you need someone to talk to and overall just spread positivity throughout the community. So thank you. Hey guys, so that was a really good skit, one of my favorite ones. 
So we're going to talk about something more serious, and I trust you we're going to have more fun after this. But my name is Marissa, and I'm a senior at Kimball High School. And going into high school, I didn't really think that high school would be just like the movies you see on TV and like High School Musical. But it's not. But I promise that you're going to have so much fun, and you're going to make great friendships with so many different people, and it's honestly such a great experience. But sometimes that can get very overwhelming when you participate in extracurricular activities. I'm a four-year uh, student athlete and I take AP classes and I'm a part of Jaguar Project. I try to get involved in school as much as I can and sometimes that can get really overwhelming with me and I can get really stressed out depending on how I want to be the best I can be in a classroom or on and off the field to be such a great person throughout my community. And at times it's very normal to be stressed out and feel like you can't handle everything by yourself and it's okay to talk so to someone. There's many different ways to cope with stress, whether it has to be healthy, I promise. Um, and there's very different ways, helpful techniques you can to organize yourself with stress. Um, Gabe's really good at that, so I'm gonna let him talk to you about that. Uh, hey guys. Oh. <laughs> okay, hey guys, I'm Gabe, I'm a junior at Kimball High School. Uh, I'm the ASD board representative for Kimball and also a student director for our theater. So, um, there's a lot of... So there's a lot of different ways you can handle stress, and stress, handling stress really depends on the person. Um, but I know one way that everyone can work on their stress is time management, and the way I work on time management is by using a planner or a calendar. And so what I do is you just write in your planner every day, and you write class by class what you have to do each day. So at the end of the day, at the end of the night, before you're gonna go to bed, you know what homework you have to do and what other things you have to get done before you can go to bed. And it really helps if you put it in order so you kind of know by like time of how much and how long it's going to take you so you can have an idea of um, what time you'll be going to bed. Um, another way that really helps, and I know it will help all of you and you all should really do this part, is just take a break. If you have a lot of work to do, you say you have like five hours of homework to do one night and you really don't know how you're going to get it done, just every hour or so take a five minute break for yourself. Uh, go eat something, drink something. Uh, lay down or something. Just do anything that isn't related to school so you can take a break for yourself so you can focus and recenter yourself and then get back to work. And that really helps you a lot and it really helps your mind because it relaxes you. Um, but yeah, there are some ways that you can handle your stress that aren't too good and my friend Matt, who's good at handling his stress, but my friend Matt is gonna show you how not to do it. What's up everybody, do you guys play any sports? So, when you experience stress, it's easy, and you should be talking to people about it so it does not get into your head and you get down on yourself, alright? And I'm sure that will affect you on the court, the field, whatever you do. Um, a negative way to deal with stress as an athlete and as a normal student is drinking, smoking, and vaping, alright? Stay away from those things so you're safe, help you in the field, and you can do your job. Talk to people, guys. Okay, so. 
So we're gonna watch a quick video about Audrey Potts and we're gonna tell you a lot more about her, so just please be attentive. Santa Clara County Sheriff's deputies arrived at Saratoga High School before noon today and arrested two teenage boys. A third teenager who used to go to Saratoga was also arrested at his new school in Gilroy. All of the 16-year-olds are accused of attacking Audrey Pott. What happened to Audrey was tragic. It should never have happened. Um, I hope that they're brought to justice. Detectives say on September 2nd of last year, Audrey was at an unsupervised house party. She drank too much and passed out. That's when they say three fellow classmates took advantage. She has no idea what occurred until she woke up the following morning and had some drawing on her body and some private areas. The boys also took photos during the attack and not only showed them off at school, but also texted and posted them online. Audrey quickly found out and posted this on her Facebook page, quote, they took pictures of me. My life is ruined. This is the worst day ever. The 15 year old took her own life a few days later. and I also play tennis. Now, as you see in that video, Audrey Potts was 15 years old. She's not much older than you guys, right? How old are you guys, like 12? 13? Guys. Anyway, she was 15 years old, and this happened at Saratoga High School. Now, that's in the Bay. And we're pretty close to the bay, right? You guys probably go there with your friends and family on the weekends, right? Yeah. Anyways, so she went to her first high school party and she drank too much. And then she passed out. And while she was passed out, a group of guys violated her and sexually assaulted her. And she didn't know any of this was going on until after she woke up, as you saw in the video, right? Then, the next day, you know what happened to her at school? No one sat with her at lunch. Everyone turned their backs on her. She trusted these people with her life. These are people that she went to school with. She probably knew them since kindergarten. And they betrayed her. Then, a couple days later, she took her own life. Now, that's a really dark topic, but it needs to be talked about because this happens. Then her mother found her, and she says, if someone were to report that to a trusted adult or to anybody, this probably could have been prevented. Do you think Audrey would still be with us here today if that happened? Yeah. yeah, she would. But think about it. Nobody was there for her. Everyone turned their backs on her and they betrayed her. Do you guys want to sit alone at lunch? No. No. Especially after something that happened, right? Because she was violated and she trusted her friends to be there for her and no one was. Do you think if someone were to report that, this would not happen? Do you think maybe if someone saw her Facebook post saying, my life is ruined, she would still be here with us today? If she had someone to talk to, someone to comfort her, someone to at least be there for her when she felt alone? Yeah, she would probably still be here with us today. Now the lesson that I want you guys to know is we should be there for each other. We go to school, with these people every single day. For years, we know these people, we should trust them. They shouldn't turn their backs on us and we shouldn't turn our backs on them when they feel alone, right? Yes. 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 Now be honest with me. If you guys saw a post like that, how many, how many of you guys in the past have took the initiative to talk to that person? If you saw a post something like that, Please be quiet. Okay, for those of you who raised your hand, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you for being there for your friend. But for those of you who didn't, I want you to try. To try to be there for someone, okay? 
Make a promise with me. I want you guys to be there for each other. You guys are going to go to school with each other for many more years. You're in middle school, this happened in high school. How many years more do you want of this bad torturing of each other when we're hurt, when we're alone? Do you want that? No, we don't. And our just parents fought to pass Senate Bill 838, which means that anyone under the age of 18 will be convicted well, anyone under the age of 18 who does a sexual act upon someone else, they will be convicted as if they're an adult. So that means their name is going to be released, that means they're going to lose all of their scholarships, all of their college acceptances, and this will follow them for the rest of their life, even when they try to get a job. Do you want that? And that's before you're 18. You have to figure out life ahead of you, and this is going to happen to you. But, these guys may have gone off easy, but this will not happen again in the future if we are there for each other. And this doesn't happen every once in a lifetime. This happens every day. There's a documentary that came out recently called Surviving R. Kelly. Have any of you guys heard of that? Yes. Okay, you guys got a good Anyways, this documentary talks about the victims that have fallen prey to sexual assault. And their friends and family say that if someone were to report this when this was happening, it probably wouldn't have gone on for as long as it did. But yeah, keep what I keep what I said to you in mind. Please be there for each other. And Kundin will talk about what happened to the guys that did this. So next we're gonna watch a really quick video. It's about a minute long about what happened to the people who sexually assaulted Audrey Potts. So please be attentive and don't talk while the video is playing. Understand that the people on campus here are there for you. 
They're working here to benefit you guys because they want you guys to prosper in middle school, even in high school. So don't be afraid to say something with a trusted adult because if you don't say anything, things like Audrey Potts are going to happen again and again. And we don't want that, right? Exactly. So we want to see something and say something to prevent things that happen to Audrey Potts to happen again. Thank you. people doing things that they know they shouldn't be doing. Many of these people making these choices don't realize what they're doing can potentially ruin their lives. After hearing the Audrey Potts story, it's clear that what we do can also ruin the lives of others. Uh, from hearing this story, we need to think twice before we do anything. If those boys had thought twice on that night at that party, Audrey Potts could have still been with us today. Think about it. All those boys had to do was think twice, and Audrey would still be with us today. Thank you. Remember that your your actions have consequences, and always think twice. And if you see something, say something. Say something. Exactly. Now, after all that seriousness, we're going to be talking about something more fun. We're going to be talking about the fun in high school. so much. Yeah, I know. Graduation was so much fun, but I know I'm definitely going to miss high school and I'm never going to forget all the memories we made. I'll never forget about those unforgettable memories we made in high school. I can almost just imagine the first football game I ever went to, which was the homecoming game. Honestly, I had a blast the whole entire homecoming week. Wow, the homecoming game was so much fun. Yeah, it was pretty stressful to plan, but looking back at it, totally worth it. Yeah, the game was so fun, and the student section had so many people. It was so close. Remember when Matt threw the interception to Riley in fourth quarter? The dance after was fun, too. Dancing and relaxing with my friends was a great way to finish off the week, and the music was totally lit. <laughs> our school is and embracing our own cultures. Yeah, all week during lunch, different clubs like Bhangra, K-pop, and API perform dances to show off their different cultures. And the Unity Festival after school at the end of the week. Different clubs bring food from their cultures and perform for the school. It's so much fun. Yeah, Unity Week really does show that our differences make us unique and bring us together. Our football and basketball teams put on a show and hype up the crowd. The games are really fun. You should really come out and show your school spirit. That's true. You really do make your best memories out of the Friday night lights. <laughs> Man, but I can't forget about the most magical night of them all, prom night. Yeah, prom is 
such an amazing night. It was so much fun getting to dress up with all my friends and dancing all night long. I remember walking into high school as a freshman, and I just wanted to rush through it all and get over with it. But now that it's over, I'm really sad to see it go away. And now, here's something that's really important that you guys should hold on to. In high school, you're going to be faced with so many new experiences and meet a lot of people. So it's best to take every opportunity that you get to make the best of your time. Thank you.
guys, when I do that, I want to see a bunch of energy, but I also want you guys to quiet down. Remember, we have a lot of respect for you guys, and we want a lot of respect back. Exactly. All right, so now that we had our fun, we're going to be talking about the safety on social media. We're not going to talk about it right now. Continue with them and affects their professional careers. So, for those of you who don't know, 
Kyler Murray was a star quarterback, a star college quarterback for the Oklahoma Sooners, one of the best teams in the nation. In fact, he did so good that he won himself the Heisman Trophy, which is the absolute best award that any college football player can get. But after receiving this trophy and this amazing honor, all this stuff was taken away from him for one reason. His past tweets on social media, his homophobic slurs that he used to use, continue with them. So now please turn your attention over there. We're gonna watch a quick story about, a quick video about his story. Supposed to be the perfect night for Heisman winner Kyler Murray, but just hours after being voted college football's best player, he was forced to apologize after some old tweets came back to haunt him. This morning, a star quarterback known for his dominant offense is now playing defense just hours after etching his name into college football lore. Oklahoma quarterback Kyler Murray's Saturday to Remember quickly turned sour after tweets he posted as a teenager containing offensive language resurfaced. According to multiple reports, some of Murray's posts contained homophobic slurs. The tweets were deleted after he hoisted college football's top individual award. Then the 21-year-old responded online, writing, I apologize for the tweets that have come to light tonight from when I was 14 and 15. So the video did cut short, but basically what's happening here is you can see that I used a poor choice of words that doesn't reflect who I am or what I believe. I did not intend to single out any individual. Okay, so the video did cut short again, but basically, as you can see here, Kyler Murray's actions from when he was 14 to 15 years old, not much older than you guys, affected him in his professional career and will follow him wherever he goes. Now, in that video, because it did cut short, later on it talks about Kevin Hart. So put your hand up if you know who Kevin Hart is. Okay, okay. Right now. So yes, Kevin Hart is an amazing comedian. Guys, if you hear my voice clap once, if you hear my voice clap twice, Thank you. So, Kevin Hart, yes, he's an amazing comedian, but bigger than that, he's a very influential member of society and does many things. So, recently, Kevin Hart was honored to be the MC of the Oscars, one of the biggest nights of entertainment. But, he had to decline this opportunity, this amazing career opportunity, just because people were complaining about tweets that he used to post containing homophobic slurs and just rude things about people. That's why we're telling you right now that whatever you do on social media, make sure you think twice, because one post now could definitely follow you into the future. Thank you. All right, so you guys how important it is to stay safe online? Yeah. yeah. And now, a few special awards from our very special guest, City Council Member and San Joaquin County District Ass Assistant District Attorney, Dan Ariola, and Mayor Rickman's wife, Mrs. Rickman. Let's get a round of applause. Let's hear it from them, guys. Time to tell you that Mayor Rickman couldn't be here today because he also has another job. He's a peace officer, but he wants you to know how important you are to our community. He's planning and hoping that you're all going to come back and be leaders here. So if you ever need anything from him, he's available. You can look online, you can talk to your parents, your teachers, anybody, any of the project kids, the Bulldog, the Jaguar, or PAC leadership. These kids do a fantastic job and spend a lot of time to make you guys enjoy high school, be prepared, and help you. They're here for you today, and they're going to be here for you when you start high school. So enjoy the rest of the program. And the one thing I like to always say to all my kids when I work at the schools, be kind, and kindness will come back. Try it. Have a good day.
All right, what I want you guys to know is that I grew up here in Tracy. I went to Jacobson, I went to Monta Vista, and I'm a graduate of West High School. But what I want you guys to know is that when I was your age, I didn't always have a nice suit on. I'm an attorney now. But I grew up, I grew up pretty poor. By the time I was 13 years old, I was working as a janitor and house cleaner to help put food on the table for my family. I was also a little heavier, so people used to make fun of me being the fat kid. But what I want you guys to know is that no matter what, and everyone's talking about being from a small town. Have you guys heard that before? Yeah. Well, I want you guys to know that no matter where you're from, no matter what you look, what you look like, I need you all to know that you are still important and that you still matter and that you have the power to make a huge difference. So when people told me that I was the fat kid, that I wasn't smart enough, that I was too poor to go to college, instead I went to UCLA where I graduated as a political science valedictorian. And then after that, I went to USC Law School where I was student body president. And then I came back here to Tracy because this is my hometown and I wanted to make a difference. Attorney, so I work with police officers, put bad people behind bars. But I knew that I could do more. So at the age of 26, I decided to run for office and I became the youngest ever elected official in the history of Tracy. Again, oftentimes people told me that I was too young to run for office. People told me that I didn't know what I was talking about. And instead, you win office, we know what you're doing, all right? Yeah. What I want you guys to know today is that no matter your age, if you guys are 12, 13 years old, I know sometimes it'd be scary to stand up to somebody, right? No. No? no. Good, good. Because that's how I, I want you to know today. When you leave here today, I want you to know the power that each of you has. All it would have took would be one person to have spoken up for Audrey Potts, and she might be alive today. Each of you has that power, with just your words, to make a huge difference. All you gotta do is do the right thing. All right? Can you guys make a promise you can do the right thing for me? Yeah. You just keep up and do it? Yeah. All right, one more thing that we gotta talk about. So, when I'm not being an elected official, I'm also Deputy District Attorney in San Joaquin County. So I work with police officers. I'm the ones that's in court, you know, like CSI, you guys watch CSI, all those kind of shows? Law and order. Law and order, yeah. That's my job. But the thing that we gotta talk about that I know you guys are, that you guys have uh, had experience with is sending nude photos. If someone were to walk through these doors with a bag of cocaine in their pockets, what, what crime would they be guilty of? Possession of drugs. That would be a felony if you walked in here with drugs in your pocket. Who here has a cell phone? Listen up. If on your cell phone right now that is in your possession, if there are nude photos on it, even of yourself, that would be possession of child pornography, which is a felony. Oh, no. All right? Now, listen up. Listen up. Say that person who walked in here with a bag of cocaine gave it to their friends. What crime have they committed? He's selling drugs, he's distributing drugs, all right? If you have a cell phone and you send a nude photo to somebody else, even if it's of you, you guys know what crime you've committed? You have now distributed child pornography, which is another felony. So what I want you guys to know too, listen up. 
I know it's kind of a funny thing to talk about, but I gotta be very real with you. It's a problem that we have here. I used to be in the school board. We had kids expelled for it all the time. This can affect your entire life. So if we're starting to send these kind of photos, I need you to know the seriousness of it. At 12 and 13 years old, you theoretically can also be tried as an adult. It's not up to me, it's up to a judge. A judge can look you in the eye and say, you're old enough to be an adult and charge you as an adult. All right, it's up to six years in prison for these felonies. Okay, so we're not messing around. We just want you guys to be safe. If this has happened to you, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna need you to go ahead and see, if you see something, you gotta say something, all right? So what we need you guys to do is to go ahead and talk to an adult, a trusted adult, to a teacher, law enforcement, myself, any of our friends over here on the side, to make sure that we're not committing these crimes, all right? All right, thank you so much. You guys have a great day.
recipients. Oh my gosh, I got accepted to USC. I was able to be careful about what I posted online. I didn't smoke, I didn't drink, and I hung out with the right people. What did I do? I thought twice. Lexi was able to think twice. What was she able to do? Think twice! And now, some of our very special members are going to be sharing their personal stories with you. Who can tell me what racism is? Because of their ethnicity, the color of their skin, the race, religion, you know, you guys know what I'm talking about. Now, um, racism is something that's more common than you guys may think. I, I personally faced a bit of that myself. See, I'm a Muslim, and I faced a lot of, I faced a lot of um, discrimination, not discrimination, I mean, I, I was bullied a lot during my life uh, for certain things like what the media says, some things I could and couldn't eat, um, and even, um, even the, the sound of my name. Actually, my name is Rumsey. It's an Arabic word, and so people would call me clumsy. A lot of weird things. Like that. Um, and so I always thought of my differences and thought of. I always thought of my differences and my. Guys, quiet down, quiet down. This is serious. This is a personal story to him. Thank you, Zach. So. so um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Oh yeah. So what happened was, I used to take my difference, my uniqueness, not as a uniqueness, as more of a extra weight, you know? I would use, think of it as something that made me less than others, but actually, when I asked my mother, even though I speak Arabic, I actually don't know what the word Ramzi means. It actually means unique and special in Arabic. And that's something that actually inspired me. And what I mean by telling you guys this is that you shouldn't take your differences as something that weighs you down. It's something that you should embrace. It's something that you should cherish in each other. And even though you guys are only in seventh grade, 
The things that you're doing right now today are going to affect you later on in life. You guys are getting ready to go to high school soon, and even then, you're, the consequences become very more brutal. So what you guys need to do is to take into account, see something, say something, like he said. Always just make sure that you're always thinking about what you're doing and how it may affect you and others. Think twice. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> So my personal story, I actually want to bring one of you up and I have somebody, Peyton Heiser, can you come up? Yeah. Alright guys, so, so for those of you who don't know, what's your name? My name is Peyton Heiser. Alright Peyton, I'd like to give you something. Here's a shirt. And also a pair of sunglasses. So, I've known Peyton for a while now, and actually, if he doesn't remember me, I know his older brother in a lot, and we have a lot of uh, commonalities between each other. And actually, one thing that I know that your brother's been working hard for is his letterman jacket, and I would actually like to give this to you for right now. to you about this earlier and you didn't really know what it is. You kind of had an idea but you did completely. So different T's right here. So I go to Tracy High so we get our block letters which are T's. This is for, if you want to turn a little bit right there, everybody can see this is for music, sports, and this is for 100 hours of community service. I played soccer, swim, and track. And on the other side I have performing arts magnet program which I've been part of for four years. All that time for four years. Four years. So that is what you are, I assume that you're going to try to do in five years. You and, uh, I know that you look up to your brother. I also look up to your brother as well, and he and I are both working very hard to accomplish things like these. So imagine, uh, we're just talking about thinking twice, and seeing something and seeing something, and watching what you post online. If you were to mess up on one of these little things, all of this, this jacket could go away. It would be gone. Do you understand that? Yes, I do. Are you ready for high school? Yes, I am. That's awesome. All right. All right, thank you. All right, guys, remember the biggest lesson is to think twice throughout high school. I know you guys are going to... Here we go. First, have a good day. All right, so the biggest thing throughout high school, you guys are going to get it. All right, guys, white down, white down. The reason I chose Payne was because he is a respectful young man, and a lot of you guys are being respectful right now, which is why I didn't bring some of you guys up right now. All right, thank you. So throughout high school, my big message is that you guys are gonna get caught up in a lot of different things. A lot of things are gonna change. My best friend, who I had here at Williams, we're no longer friends at all. We had a few differences come up. Nothing's bad, everything is okay. But you get, a lot of things change in your life. So remember, always to think twice, and if you see something, say something, and don't be afraid about it. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you, guys, once again, for listening to our story. How about we do a quick Q&A? Let's bring out Matt and Maddie! What's up everybody? Hi, my name is Maddie Mello and I am a, a senior at Tracy High School. I am a part of Leadership Bulldog Project and I'm a four-year member of the Tracy High softball team and I will be um, furthering my softball career at William Jessup University on a softball scholarship. Yeah. Well, my name is Matt McGowan. I'm a senior at Kimball High School. Uh, I'm a varsity team football captain. I run track. And I plan on playing the next level as well. So we came up here to ask you guys, or ask you guys if you guys have any questions for us, let's shoot them out. Question? 
Raise your hand. Thank you. 